what's good YouTube, it's your boy Dani, and I'll be lying to you if I say I didn't do it again. I recorded the first five minutes of the video, and something told me to just check the mic. I would say it was good that helped me, because I would have been talking for like 20, 30 minutes without actually recording. I checked the mic and I realised I didn't actually turn the mic on after recording. So even though I'm still sceptical, okay, it's on. Perfect. So, <laughs> thank you for watching today's video. Thank you for coming onto the channel. Hopefully you have a blessed day. It's Sunday morning for me. I'm recording before I go to church. Hopefully you've gone to church today or you praise God somehow, some way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so firstly, preps. I want to give a big thanks to my friend Titus for, he made a video and I watched this video and it made me also want to make a video like this because as he, as he was talking about it and I recommend you should go watch his video because he, may be say, he might say things that are different to what I'm saying as well. And because obviously we're two different people, two different point of views. So I recommend going to watch his video. And one thing that he did say is, talking about as humans, we were born to change. And that, that there is, for me, I relate to that a lot because as I was saying, in, well, you didn't get to see it, but as I was saying before, as humans, we were born to change. And me, my, myself, I've changed throughout life. Obviously, I've changed in age from like 13, 14, 15, up, up until about 20. But I've had micro changes as well. Like I've changed my mindset, changed X's, changed Y's, changed things about myself. And as he said, as humans, we were born to change. One thing he also pointed out is it would be crazy for you to be looking at a baby and holding a baby to the same standards that it was had when it was first born. I think he said, um, if you looked at a baby that stopped crying, well, you wouldn't go back to that baby and say, oh, you stopped crying, why do you stop crying anymore? It wouldn't make sense because we grow. And yeah, I enjoyed that point a lot. So I've said that I haven't actually come up with a conclusion for the whole entire video yet, but I said it wouldn't be fair for me to give you the points and not actually give you a way to sort out these things or give you a way to help yourself. So I've said, I'm just going to be going through the points and try and stick in some advice to help you with X and Y's because I think the whole video will be in terms of advice, but I think a lot of these points are to, to open your eyes on certain aspects of what you might be doing, what you may be doing. Because if you're watching this video, most likely you're thinking, why am I struggling to change? And I don't want to just give you more things to make your life harder. I want it to be a thing where it gets you thinking and if I'm able to give you some solutions that have worked for me, worked for people I've spoken to, then maybe some of you will be messaging me saying, oh, after watching your video, it's helped me to change my life, etc., etc." But yeah. So let's just get straight into the video. So as I said, why you are struggling to change. The first point that I started is, is why you refuse to change your mindset. And that is a big one because if you believe that everything you do is correct, you will never be able to help yourself do you get what i mean there's a lot of people who who live with a prideful life who live a prideful life i mean and the main issue with that is you never have any faults nobody can tell you you're wrong nobody can tell you anything to help you you will never be able to improve yourself and the issue with that is we as humans are blind and not actually blind. i mean figuratively blind if Nobody ever tells us what we're doing is wrong. We will consistently believe we are right. Obviously, we have the morals that are put into our hearts from God, but some people don't really, don't really have in touch with that. We call that conviction. And that will cause you to consistently be in the same spot going forward. And another thing is a lot of us, we have found people like-minded with our mindsets and refuse to change that. So the first point well, macro point of your future change of mindset is I said, you are locking yourself into what you once was. Titus also said this. You are locking yourself into what you once was. And the issue with that is, you can't elevate yourself if all you say is, I was this, I was that. You can't stop, you, start, you can't stop saying to yourself, let me think, you can't stop saying, you can't start making money, money if you say, oh, I'm broke 24 seven. Because you are, you are, you're speaking those words into existence. I have a video coming as well about the power of the tongue. And the thing about that is, if you consistently talk negatively about yourself, that is what you'll be. As a man thinketh, so is he. So, if you believe you are what you are, that's what you will be. And if you are trying to change yourself, but you consistently tie yourself up in old mindsets, old things, and you tell yourself that's what you are. Let's say you are a, you was an ex-addict or a drug addict, and, but you keep telling yourself, oh, I can never stop doing this, I can never stop smoking, I can never stop drinking, I can never stop doing that. 
then believe it, that's what you will be. You will never stop. But if you say to yourself, no, this will be the last time that I'll smoke, and you, and you genuinely believe that, it will be the last time you smoke. I put it here, you are agreeing with your current state of mind. This goes back to what I was saying about the prideful thing. If you believe what you are doing is correct, you are stuck. I found a scripture for this as well. It was Matthew 6, 23. In KJV it says, But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And in the New Living Translation, I hope that's it. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is full of darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. And what this is basically saying is, if you believe that you are doing the right thing when you are actually doing the wrong thing, it is worse than anything because you are in the deepest darkness at that point. So let's say there's A and B. There's the person who's actually doing right and knows that they're doing right. And then there's the person, that's person B who's doing wrong and knows they're doing wrong. Now let's bring in person C. Person C believes they're doing right when they are actually doing wrong. That is worse than person B because person B is doing wrong and they know they're doing wrong. And since they know that and they're conscious of it, that person can be helped. Because if you're doing wrong and you know you're doing wrong, somebody can say to you, brother, you're doing wrong, please, let's change it. But if you go to that person, C, and you say to them, brother, you're doing something wrong, and they say, no, 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 I'm doing something right, they are in deeper darkness than the person who knows that they're in the darkness. And a lot of us are like that. I used to be like that really badly. If someone were to try and tell me to do something, I'd be like, what are you talking about? I know what I'm doing. And one of the greatest things I've ever heard is, I know is the most prideful saying ever. Because realistically, we don't know anything. If somebody comes to help you, take it. Because you never know where that could take you. So, as I was saying about being in the deepest of darkness. If you believe you are doing something right, how can you check it? Let me think, how can you actually check it? Firstly, does it coexist with God's word? Is it correct? If not, it's not really what you should be doing. And pray about it. Ask God, God, am I doing the right thing? If you're not doing the right thing, trust me, he'll tell you you're doing the wrong thing. The next point I had was, you constantly think negatively and dwell on the failures in your life. Life is not about passing or failing, it's about passing or learning. And I believe that this is a thing that the schools have taught us. And me personally, that's why I don't advocate for school. Because... We would have exams, for example, like your GCSEs, your A-levels. I don't know what Americans do, I don't know what other countries do, but I know in the UK we do GCSEs and A-levels. And the thing about that is, you spend so much time revising and learning that. Let's say you do fail, you don't see that as, that you see that as, that's your world over. Everything is done from there. But life ain't like that. I finished school, I think, two, three years ago. I think two years ago, maybe. And since then, I failed. Failed. I've gone through so many failures. I've had so many downs. But as I said here, it's not about passing or failing. It's about passing or learning. Because through those failures, you learn. We learn through failures. But in other aspects of life, we think failure means it's over. But you can never, it's never over. God always has more work for you, more things to do. When you're done, trust me, you'll be done because you won't wake up that day. If you wake up, you still have more things to learn and to be passing through. So... That's why I say with school, there's a big issue there because it causes us to believe that we feel when, when we go through things or when we felt we actually, it's like it's over. We believe that the world is over. We think everything has just come crumbling in on us when we fell. But the best mindset switch to iPad is that, no, that's a lesson. You fell in, you miss a goal. Let's say you're a footballer, you miss, I don't know why I keep bringing, I don't even watch football, but let's say you're a footballer and you've missed um, the, the winning goal or the most important goal, you've missed it. But now you know that you need to work on your shots, you need to work on your, what's the word? I forgot the word now, I think it's your, how critical you are, I think that's what they say. You have to work on how critical you are in front of the goal. Let's say you are a business part, a, bi a salesman, and you're trying to pitch to somebody, and you say the wrong word, then you know you have to improve on your speech. You might have failed in terms of getting that client, but if you improve your speech, the opportunity cost will be more and more and more clients. But imagine you never failed. Imagine you never went through that first trial. You would never be able to improve. You wouldn't be able to achieve the opportunity cost that you have coming for you. 
I also have written, become an optimist instead of a pessimist. Now this one, this is very critical because this goes back to you, you constantly think negatively and dwell on the failures in your life. I'll never forget, yeah, <laughs> when I was younger, I used to always say, the world is this, the world hates me, or I hate my life, or um, there's other sayings, I can't really remember them, but there's a lot of sayings that are just very negatively, being a hater, etc. And the issue with that is, you sow what you reap. If you constantly say, the world hates me, or my life is horrible, or I'm depressed, that's what you will reap. And <laughs> another thing is that, I, that if you think about sowing something, if you plant in an oak tree seed, I don't know how big an oak tree seed is, but imagine you have to plant an oak tree seed. You'll see the seed at most is probably that big, at most. I don't know how big it is, but I'm guessing about that big. But you know how vast an oak tree is. When you sow, what you reap is, I don't want to say 10, it, it's just so much more than what you have sowed. You will reap more than what you have sowed. So if you believe that, you're depressed, and you sow those words of, I am depressed, the depression you will receive after that, it's not a depression that you want. I can bet you anything. And as I said, for, I'm going to have a video coming about with the power of the tongue. And the reason why I say be an optimist instead of a pessimist, because if all you do is look at life as bad, that's how life will be for you. But if you look at life in a positive way, you look at life and you see that the shine has signed, and you just thank God for that. You thank God for you being able to wake up, open two gifts your eyes. You thank God for all the things that you have and you say, okay, today's another day. I have a fresh start. Instead of going to sleep thinking, oh my days, I have to wake up again tomorrow. Say, oh my days, I have a fresh start. I have another, I think it's 86,400 seconds for my next day again. I can start again. I can start fresh again. That day's over. Let's now move on to the present. You will enjoy life a lot more and you'll be able to change. You will be able to change. Allow yourself to see the good and bright side of your life instead of constantly bringing yourself down. If you try and improve your life, your mind will try and hold you back. When I started to make my changes in life, I was like, maybe I won't fit in anymore. Maybe I might not have no friends. Maybe X, maybe Y. I keep doing X and Y, but maybe this, maybe that. And the thing about that that is the biggest holding factor. That will hold you back more than anything because you will constantly be saying to yourself, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. And trust me, you won't be able to do it. So if you want to change, you have to get more control of your mindset. You have to be able to be like, okay, no, no, no. Whilst I change, I will meet these people and I will improve this part of my life. I will be able to do this in my life. So that's how you have to be looking at it. As I said, you refuse to change your mindset. But once you change your mindset, once you're comfortable with changing your mindset, you have unlocked the greatest weapon of your life. The next point I have is you refuse to change your environment. And this one is, this is, this is probably the, the biggest factor because we spend the most time with our friends and our families. And if they are constantly doing wrong, it's going to be very, very hard for you to try and do right. The people around you and the things around you are constantly reminding you of who you once was. Let's say you was a gang member, yeah, an ex-gang member, and you were trying to get yourself on the right path, you try to get a job, you try to get um, an, a serious relationship, you're not just having sex with everybody left, right and centre, you're trying to get into a serious relationship. But you still hang around with your same boys or your family are full of gang members and you still chill with those family members. And this is not me saying to you cut your friends off or cut your family off, but just for you to think about ways that you could spend less time with them and try and meet new people and do these things because I'm not here to be trying to ruin your life. I'm just trying to make you start thinking about these things. So let's say you're an ex-gang member and you're around these people. If you're trying to do better for yourself, but they are what your past was, it's going to be very, very hard for you to try and change because you're going to be looking around you. Imagine you're trying to find a job, but you're seeing your friends around you making illegal money consistently around you and they're saying, yo, boy, just come back, man. Forget about this lifestyle stuff. Even if you're earning less money and it's legal money, it's less money than what we're earning. Just jump back onto this stuff. Oh, you stop smoking, you stop drinking. Oh, you're missing out, bro. Just come, just jump back on with us. Start, start drinking and smoking again. Oh, what, you try to think you're going to find a good girl? No, 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 man. There's, there's the girls around the blocks, man. Just come in with these girls. And things like that will get you thinking. You'll be like, oh, maybe they're right, maybe they're right. And you'll be battling your own mind. 
And the issue with that is that will get you, they'll get you nowhere in life because you will never be able to progress. You will have these same people around you till the day you die. And you may have that community, but is that really the community you want to die with? Is that really the community that have, has your best interests at, around you? I know that when I started to change, I had some people that were saying X, Y, and Z. But the real community around me that I have now today are the same people that was when I was changing, saying to me, yeah, no, 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 no. I respect what you're doing. You look like you're going on the right path. Because those are the people who really have your, your best interests at hand. If you are going on a change, and as I said, it's a change that can be prevalent with what the Bible says, then... It's something that the people around you should be able to understand and not should not be holding you back. You want to start a business, your family and friends should not be saying to you, no, 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 there's no point, you'll never make it. They should be encouraging you. I had a friend, and one thing about this friend is he was um he was he was in a bad space. And not not even just a bad space mentally, but in terms of a bad space of his environment. And one thing about that is he had all these ideas, all these goals, all these aspirations. But he'll try and relay his ideas onto them. There's a scripture about this. I think it's don't oh, I think it's don't cast your pearls onto swine or don't cast your pearl onto pigs or something like that. It's Matthew something, um, what Jesus said. And he kept having all these great ideas, all these goals, all these aspirations. But he kept telling these people. But the one thing they'll do is they'll be like, nah, and I'll be quiet, man. Ow. <laughs> he said, be quiet, man. Where's the girls, man? Where's the drugs? Let's do X, let's do Y. And the issue with that is, he was never heard. He never felt heard. So he said, you know what? Yeah, no, nah, I'm around these guys 24 seven. There's no point. Let me just stick to this. Let me just be like everybody else. And me and him spoke. And I said, brother, no, 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 no. You have all these ideas. You want to do X and Y, you want to do Y. Start it, bro. It's possible. It's not impossible. There are people who had come from worse laughter than we had. And look where they are. So it's, there's no such thing as something that's impossible. Nothing is impossible. You're just around the wrong people, you're telling the wrong people, and they're making you believe that you can't do it. But realistically, you can do anything. Your environment tries to keep you where you are, and when you try to do anything that's sub that is of substance or value, they will tell you that's not who you are. And familiarity destroys a lot of people because I could be around the same people that I was when I was younger, and Bring them. In. Let's say I was to go back. Me now, I was to go back in past and just go straight to my younger body and go to my younger mind. And if I was to say the ideas that I have now to those people that I was around, it would be like throwing a brick at the wall. There'll just be no point of doing that because they'll be like, "Bro, that's not who you are, bro. You're." How many people watching this might know what I used to be called? You're that guy. You're not supposed to be doing X. You're not supposed to be doing Y. You're not supposed to be going to church, bro. You're not a church boy. You're a, you're a bad boy, bro. You're this, you're that. And things like that, as I said, once again, it will get to your head. It will make you believe you can't do anything. You're supposed to be where you was and be the same person that you have been. And that's not good for you. It will eat you up on the inside. It will, it will destroy you mentally. The amount of people that I've spoken to about their friends that are there around, their environments, the people that they're chilling with, hurting them because they don't want to do X. They don't want to conform to everything. They want to be who they are. But it's hard to be who you are around people who don't let you be who you are. And that's something I, that I learned which helped me to change. You are the product of the five people you spend the most time with. Bad company ruins good morals which will ruin you. Let's say there's this Christian boy, yeah, this church boy, and he gets introduced to the, to the, to the bad boys in school. Because he wants to fit in, He'll be like, you know what, yeah, nah, nah, nah. On Sundays, these men are chilling on the block, smoking, drinking, chatting to girls instead of going to church. You know what, yeah, church might not be cool. Let me just start chilling with these guys instead of going to church. Everyone jumping online, playing games on, on Sunday. Nah, let me just go there instead. No one's reading their Bible. Let me stop wasting my time. Let me not do this. No one's going to the gym. Man, bun the gym, man. Let me not go to the gym there. Let me just chill with these, man. Let me drink. Let me just ruin my body. Because that's what the five people that, that he wants to fit in around are doing. And the issue with that is that will kill you. <laughs> Honestly speaking, that's the word. That, it will kill you. It will destroy you. Because that's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're not supposed to be doing those things for eternity, brother. Because it will just... It's painful because <laughs> it's, that's, it's so many people's reality. And I can only say it's by the grace of God that I was able to avoid that type of lifestyle. And that's, that's the reality of a lot of people. But I'm here to tell you that that doesn't have to be a reality for the rest of your life. You can change. You can be like, okay, 
these guys are doing X, these guys are doing Y. But let's think about the long-term goal. Let's think about 10 years down the line. Will they still be doing this? If yes, run. Don't, don't just run. Run from there. Find new people. If no, okay. What's the point of doing it now then? If you know that you're not going to be chilling with these people in 10 years, and this is not to say, oh, don't, start, don't make friends unless it's a long-term thing, but if it's not good friends at least, there's no point. There's literally no point. If you know that they're just doing the wrong thing, and as humans, we will have morals. We know what is right compared to what is wrong. If you know that they're doing the wrong thing, there's just no point. There's zero point. It's hard to excel when everyone and everything around you is trying to bring you down. So, I had another friend, yeah, and this guy was chilling around with these with some other boys, and they were all in some car, and around these times, he was trying to change himself. So, all in this car. The other guys, they're smoking, they're blasting music inside of a car, and this old lady walks past the car, and she looks inside the car, and she's thinking, oh, those are some bad boys, and walks away, and he's like, no, 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 what's she doing, man? I'm not like these guys. She's probably talking about all the other guys. Because let's say there's five people in the car. So there's four people who was like, no, nah. she's probably looking at the four. And when I spoke to him, I was like, brother, put yourself in her shoes. She's not going to look inside that car and think, oh, that guy in the corner who's on his phone, he's probably a good boy. And the rest of the four are bad dudes. She's not thinking that. She's looking at all of them and saying, these are people that I don't want in the streets. Somebody call the police and get them all arrested. That's what she's probably thinking. Rightfully so, because... That's, that's how all of them are looking. You don't look at the five people and be like, oh, that one guy, he has potential. That's not what you're doing. You're saying, okay, these five people, they're all doing the same thing. They all look the same. Okay, they're all bad people. And as I was talking about changing your environment and changing your mindset, that comes with changing, for example, the way you dress. And I have a video coming about this as well. Because it's hard for you to change if you look like the stigma. If I don't want to look like a gang member, I won't dress like a gang member. If I don't want to look like a, a, a male prostitute, I won't dress like a male prostitute. If I don't want to look like I do wrong, I won't <laughs> wear clothes that, that someone would do wrong. I don't know, I don't know. I wouldn't wear like a mask or I wouldn't do those type of things because that's the perception that you will receive. And if you don't want that perception on your life, you should not be looking like that. Because even if it's a thing where, ah, oh, it's about, it uh, doesn't matter what, um, what people think about you. But as you get older, it actually does. Because for you to make it anywhere in life, you're going to need somebody there. You want to, make, you want to build a business, trust me, you're going to need people around you. But nobody wants to build, build, build a business with somebody who's, who they think is going to scam them. Nobody wants that. The next point I had was, you refuse to move on and not look back. The scripture I had here was Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I don't know if any of you have tried it. I haven't. But I don't think making rivers in the desert is an easy thing to do. <laughs> and God said, I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So, as he says here, remember not the former things. Neither consider the things of the old. So forget your past. When you start to make these transitions of changing, you have to forget the things that you was once. Because if you constantly look back, imagine you are trying to conquer lust, but you constantly look back and say, ah, but I did enjoy that, I did enjoy that. You will never be able to get past it. You want to you stop gluttony. you want to stop eating everything that you see. Well, that means every single time you look at food, you can't be like, oh, I remember when I last ate that, oh, I enjoyed it so much. Because you will consistently eat. You're trying to get past swearing. You can't be like, oh, when I said the, the F-bomb to the person X, it felt so good. You can't do that because you'll never be able to move forward. So you have to learn whilst you're changing. Enjoy that new change. Don't look back. Keep moving forward and forget the former things. And the last point I have here was, you refuse to accept the inconvenience of changing. You want to get in shape, but you don't go to the gym. You want more money, but you don't save. You want a better life, but you don't want to read, change your friends and change your mind because all of these things take effort. And a lot of us are held back by our energy, meaning that oh, it's easy to say these things. It's very, very easy. It's very easy to say, oh, tomorrow I'm going to start going to the gym. But when it is 7 a.m. and your alarm clock goes off and you say, okay, now I'm going to go to the gym, it's easier for you to click the snooze button and go back to sleep than it is for you to 
get up and go to the gym. It's easy for you to say, nah, tomorrow. Nah, tomorrow is the, it's the easiest thing to do out of anything. Because it's so simple. Nah, tomorrow. It's two words. That's easier than you waking up, showering, getting changed, eating breakfast, making your way to the gym, go to the gym, training, and coming back. And starting your day like that. Because nah, tomorrow is so much easier than that. And nah, tomorrow, well, you can say nah, tomorrow for the rest of your life. But I don't think you could go to the gym for the rest of your life. It's the harder route. But we have to take that route. Because that route is the better route. Yeah. The definition of change. Change means replace something with something else, especially something of the same kind that is newer or better. Substitute one thing for another. Changing your complacency and your old life comes with the discomfort of embarking in the unknown. When you want to change your life, you're entering, entering a realm you have never entered before. It's the same way that if you enter a room of new people, some of us get anxiety. Like me personally, I would get anxiety because I'm like, I have no influence in this room. I know nobody in this room. Let's say nobody in that room knows me. I know nobody. So all these eyes are looking at me. Okay, but I know nobody. But that comes with it. That comes with the fact of... That comes with, it, with, that comes with it. Because since you're embarking in the fact that you've never entered this, this, this realm before, you've never entered this state of your life before, you have to accept that. And you have to also enjoy that. Because... I also have written here, embrace the inconvenience of change. Cha wait, yeah. Embrace the, in the inconvenience of change. The person who embraces the hardship and the pain will go further than the person who loves the goal. If all you do is think, okay, I'm going to be a better person speaker. I'm going to be better at speaking in front of people. But when it's time for you to get on stage, you're thinking, no, 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 no. When you're shaking, you're like, no, I, I can't do this. I can't do this. You won't go further than the person that says, okay, my heart's getting racy. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. That person will do better than the person that says, okay, I want to do it. The person who does it and enjoys the, I'm going, I am doing it, will go further than the person that says, I will do it. And I also have written here, change and sacrifice are two sides of the same coin. You want to change you, you must be prepared to sacrifice something. If you want to become better, you have to, something has to change and something has to be sacrificed. You want to become a knowledgeable person, you have to sacrifice the time of you doing inconveniences and put it towards reading and studying. You want to become, you want to have better friends, you want to broaden your network. It has to come with a sacrifice of you not chilling with your old friends and spending time with new friends. As I said, change is two sides of the same coin. Change and sacrifice are two sides of the same coin. So whatever you want to change, you have to be ready to sacrifice something else. That's all the points that I had for today but I'll just give you some little tips as well, something straight off the dome. In terms of changing, I believe that the best thing to do is just trust in God and trust in your heart. And if you want to, if you want to grow, you have to be ready for anything that comes. And don't be scared of it. Be happy that it's coming because as you make that conscious decision, only good will come from it. You want to become better in life, change is necessary. So enjoy it, enjoy the hardships, and hopefully you both can make it to the top of anything. If you want any more, if you have any more questions, feel free to comment them down, message them to me. Um, you want any more tips, just message me. I'll, all my DMs are open, you can message me on Instagram or Snapchat or anything. Um, but once again, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this video helped somebody. And yeah, it's been your boy Donnie, we out, peace.